So I'm in Calgary at a little park that got put in a couple of years ago and the park was an attempt to try and bring up the neighborhood. So I live in a place called Forest Lawn which is kind of considered to be the lower kind of economic, socio-economic um, neighborhood of Calgary. And so the local community came up with this idea to put in a food forest and a basketball court and a natural playground which was incredible. And they had lots of public input and got a lot of support for it and I'm actually walking in the food forest right now I'll just give you uh, some images so you can see what's going on here so so I'm just gonna walk over to this tree here and you can kind of see it's pretty sad looking in fact all the trees in the food forest are pretty sad and the only thing that's really actually doing well is the the clover that I'm standing on right now um, it seems to be doing quite well and the food forest itself is actually built onto mulch pathways. Here's another sad looking tree. You can tell it's really, really water stressed. There's a honeyberry right here. <clears throat> right over there. And uh, some pretty sad looking currants over here. And so this is something that I see so often when people put in food forests. It's one of the biggest problems uh, whenever I see people putting in permaculture systems and it's really sad because it ends up giving permaculture a bad name and food forestry a bad name and and uh, I know for a fact that this particular property was designed by a local architect and um, I just wanted to make this video to show a couple of small things that could have completely changed the success metrics of this food forest you see it's not the food forest that's failing and it's not the design and it's not the idea itself. It's not permaculture that's failing. It's a very fundamental thing that went wrong right from the very beginning. And so in permaculture, there's a very simple mantra that we use, which is water, access, and structures. And so for before you get any biology to grow, you need to figure out where the water's coming from. Water is basically the gasoline in the system and the sun is essentially the gas pedal. And so in Calgary, we get a lot of sun. So it's kind of like driving a dragster. You've got, um, you know, pedal to the metal, especially this summer, we've had almost no rain. Um, we had a lot of snow though, but we have almost no rain in the, in the spring and the summer so far. And so um, if you don't set these systems up to get access to their own water, then they're either going to be dependent on somebody else to harvest the water for them, or um, they're going to die basically, unless you've got really good soils or they kind of have a lot of luck. So notice right now how I'm walking on a basketball court, okay? This basketball court is actually upslope, so it's higher in elevation than the food forest that I just came from. The food forest is right behind me. Not only does this basketball court um, have a slope on it and is higher than the food forest, but there is no thought in how water was going to shed off of this basketball court. You see, I'm not actually standing on a basketball court. I'm actually standing on a paved roof. And the only thing that this architect would have had to have done is taken some curbs along that basketball court, right on this edge and right on that edge, and had it come all the way to this corner right here and then what they could have done is run a small culvert underneath that path or even a rolling dip to feed into these pathways right here. Now I'm going to go measure out how wide that cord is and I'm going to tell you exactly how many liters per year we could have harvested off of that paved surface and it would have passively irrigated this entire food forest and guaranteed its success. So let's go out and measure how big this court is. I'll just use my own gate because I am approximately have one meter. So I'm, I'm, I'll measure it out and then I'll come back into the video. So, okay, so the court is about 10 meters by 10 meters. So it's about 100 square meters, which means that annually this court is going to receive roughly 30. 2,000 liters of water per year, which would mean more than enough water to completely hydrate this food forest. So if you're going to be designing a food forest as an architect, or even in your own backyard, 
or on a piece of space around your farm, don't forget to understand where the water is coming from, where it's going to, so map out all the hard surfaces, and then make sure that you create a plan within your food forest to harvest all of that water. And if you want to know one way that you can do this on smaller food forest type systems, check out my video on urban swales in my YouTube channel. It's got great advice on how you can use simple mechanisms like weeping tile and mulch on pathways to use them as a water harvesting um, systems that basically will store water in the mulch and create incredible fertility all passively without ever having to water it. Now that 32,000 liters of water, keep in mind, did not include the additional snowpack that you're going to see on there as well. So it, it's probably closer to 40 or 50,000 liters depending on how much snow we will receive in a, in, a, in a winter. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check us out online, vergepermaculture.ca, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And right now we have a free introduction to permaculture that you can take on our website. I'll make sure that I leave a link in the show notes below and in the card at the end of this video. Have a great day.